What's up, collectors? Welcome back to Films by Color. I've got a collection update for you guys today. It's been a long time since I've done one of these videos, but I've got quite a few things here that I've been picking up recently that I want to share with you guys. And I've also got a package here that I'm going to open. This is my first ever order from Vinegar Syndrome, and I can't wait to get that opened up and show you guys what's in there. And I've got a whole stack of weird, random, eclectic things that I've been picking up the last couple months that I haven't shared on camera yet. So I want to show those to you as well. So let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and jump right into the video. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I was looking at my shelf over here today and realizing that it's just been a long time since I've done a good old fashioned laid back collection update video. So that's what I'm gonna do for you today. I did do a video about the Dante's Inferno release that I picked up and then also a quick video about my Shout Select haul. But other than that, I haven't really been sharing what I've been picking up over the last couple of months. So we're gonna cover all of it today. This is gonna be a catch all video everything I've been picking up recently, starting with the most recent thing that I grabbed. This just got here. This is my first order from Vinegar Syndrome. I'm finally a Vinegar Syndrome collector. Not my first Vinegar Syndrome release. I actually did go ahead and grab the Sidekicks limited edition that they put out uh, last year, I believe. I got that a couple months ago with some leftover birthday money. That is a beautiful release, but I'm going to cover that in a future video. But I did have to get that second hand because that's already out of print. This is my first order from the Vinegar Syndrome website. So we're going to get this opened up. I'm going to show you what I got. So opening the package here, very secure. Love how they shipped this thing. There's paper on top. There's also paper on the bottom and there is a complete uh, bubble wrap envelope all the way around everything that's in there. Uh, four titles I got today. There's also a little uh, Vinegar Syndrome Media Club card and then a sticker. Uh, and there's some packaging at the bottom there. So thanks so much kept it very safe. Everything looks like it's in perfect condition. Uh, I picked up four titles in this haul. Uh, two of them are actually Deaf Crocodile releases, which is a sub label of Vinegar Syndrome. And then the other two are Vinegar Syndrome releases. We'll go ahead and take a look at the Deaf Crocodile titles first. The first one here is the limited edition slipcover release of Heroic Times. I was very happy to get this version before it went out of print. There is the back and then there's different artwork underneath on the case itself. This is a Hungarian animated film. Uh, the only Hungarian animated film I have right now and that I've ever seen is this release from Arbolos. This is Son of the White Mare uh, and it also includes Johnny Corncob from the same director, both from the 70s. So I'm very excited to check out this 80s animated film out of Hungary. Apparently this uses a mix of actual oil paintings and 2D animation, similar to the Japanese animated film, Belladonna of Sadness, if you've seen that. So I can't wait to see what that looks like in motion. And according to the back here, uh, narratively, it is very similar to the uh, fantasy films of Alexander Tushko, which I also picked up from Deaf Crocodile recently. These are the three releases they've put out so far, and I'm eagerly awaiting the fourth one coming out later this year. So I can't wait to check out Heroic Times. Seems like a perfect release for me. And then I've got another one here from Deaf Crocodile. This is the Mysterious Castle in the Carpathians. This is another limited edition slipcover. They always do beautiful slipcovers for their releases. And there's the artwork underneath, even more uh, crazy and out there. This is a Czech film and it's described here on the back as a unique and almost indescribable mix of gothic fiction, steampunk gadgetry, slapstick comedy, and romantic opera. And it says the steampunk gadgetry is designed by Czech animation wizard Jan Svankmeyer, who I'm a big fan of. I haven't seen all of his work. I've seen his adaptation of Alice and his adaptation of Faust and a couple of his shorts, but his stuff is actually kind of hard to get. I think there's an old DVD of most of it that you can find, but He's awesome. I really like his stuff. Another Czech uh, animation wizard, like they said. This is based on a short story by Jules Verne, and I always love seeing his stuff translated to the screen. I'm also a big fan of another Czech animation wizard, Carol Zeman, uh, who you can find a couple of his films uh, in the Criterion collection, but most of his stuff still hasn't been put out on Blu-ray yet, which is unfortunate, but I'm very excited to check out The Mysterious Castle in the Carpathians. Seems like another one that I'm really gonna love. So those are the two Deaf Crocodile releases that I got in this haul. When I did my top 10 Digibooks video last week, I got a lot of people in the comments saying, hey, you need to check out these uh, Cinematograph releases because they are Digibooks. They're bringing back Digibooks and they are really, really nice releases. A lot of people speaking very highly of them. So I went ahead and uh, bit the bullet and picked up two of them. I picked up the two that are still in print. Spine number one here, this is Little Darlings, which is a film from 1980, uh, kind of coming of age story about 
two girls from opposite sides of the tracks that meet at camp and uh, form a friendship. And it is just a beautiful release. So it comes with a outer slip case, which is what you see right there. And then underneath, there's the Digibook. You can see uh, slides out from the side and uh, it's just a beautiful release. I'm not gonna go ahead and open these all up because I do have a video about these coming. I'm gonna do a whole video just specifically about this line. This is spine number one, like I said, and then this is spine number three, Going South, which is a comedy Western directed by Jack Nicholson, of all things. And then spine number two, which came out in between these, is Red Rock West, a Nicolas Cage kind of neo-noir from the 90s. I actually did find one of those on eBay secondhand, and I ordered it, and it is coming in the mail. So when that gets here, I will open up all three of these and uh, try to watch them too and do a video all about these Cinematograph Digibooks in one fell swoop. So I'm not gonna talk about those in detail here, but I did pick those up. Thanks so much to all of you in the comments who recommended those. They look like really nice releases and I can't wait to get those opened up and to watch those soon. I've already planned a date night with Grace where we're gonna watch Little Darlings together. So those are the Cinematograph releases and that is my entire haul from Vinegar Syndrome. A great first order if I do say so myself, and I can't wait to pick up more titles from them in the future. So let's move on to some other things that I've picked up over the last couple months. We already talked briefly about Sidekicks, that's another Vinegar Syndrome release, and actually another sub-label, not Deaf Crocodile, but Yellow Veil is another sub-label from Vinegar Syndrome. I've been trying a lot of their sub-labels and uh, these releases look absolutely amazing. I can't remember if I told you guys about the Saragossa Manuscript, or not, but I picked that up a while ago. And then just recently, I picked up the Hourglass Sanatorium from the same director. Uh, so those go very nice together on the shelf. They're spine number 11 and 12 from Yellow Veil. Can't wait to, uh, to watch those. Most of the things I'm gonna be talking about today are things that I have not seen yet. I bought them specifically to watch them because this, for a lot of these things, is the only way you can watch these. A lot of these aren't streaming. So this is not gonna be a movie discussion video. This is just gonna be talking about the things I've picked up. I will be doing a video later today about a lot of the recent things I've been watching on the channel, actually discussing those films in more detail. So stay tuned for that video. That'll be a whole different thing. We're just gonna talk about some, uh, some cool releases that I've been grabbing lately. I will go ahead and jump into Indicator next. This is a label that I love. They put out some of the nicest releases and I've been looking for this one for a while. Could not find it. It went out of print uh, pretty quickly after it came out and uh, prices on eBay were, were crazy. But I finally found one for a decent price. This is Burt Lancaster in The Swimmer. This was one of those elusive releases from last year that everybody was talking about. And uh, it was actually on Criterion Channel. I popped it in and I, or I flipped it on, on the Criterion Channel, and uh, I watched a good bit of it. I think I maybe got like 20, 30 minutes in, and I was like, oh yeah, this th I like this. I'm gonna go ahead and grab it. So I went ahead and bought it, and uh, I will finish this soon. This is spine number 46. This is one of their limited edition uh, releases from Indicator. It's got uh, the case in there and a nice booklet as well. Love these sets. Uh, I try to grab these when I can and uh, this one seemed like a really good movie. So I'm going to go ahead and watch that one soon and I'll talk about that in a future uh, kind of discussion style video. But that's The Swimmer. I also grabbed uh, a quick Criterion release. This is The Last Temptation of Christ. Uh, very familiar. This is a Martin Scorsese film. I grabbed this a couple days before Easter because I wanted to give this a second chance. Watched this for the first time either last year or the year before and was not a big fan of it. I gotta be honest, I, it didn't work for me the first time, but I since then had listened to the audio commentary. Someone uploaded the commentary with Scorsese and the writer on YouTube and I listened to that while I was working one day. And after listening to that commentary, uh, very interesting commentary by the way, highly recommend that. Uh, it just made me so curious to check it out again. And I think uh, after like kind of readjusting my expectations and going into it a second time, I liked it a whole lot better. Uh, really, really enjoyed this on the second viewing and uh, really recommend that one. That is spine number 70 from the Criterion Collection. Uh, just a quick one that I had to grab. Couldn't wait for another sale. Just wanted to go ahead and grab that one so I could watch it around Passover Easter time. So very happy that I picked that one up. And then jumping out of the boutique stuff and into some standard releases, but still some very cool stuff. There's a really cool box set here that I'm gonna jump to next. I recently went up to Chattanooga and there is a store there, a secondhand store called McKay's and it's massive. It's this huge bookstore, tons and tons of shelves of books and tons and tons of movie shelves as well. 
One of those places though where it's hard to find much because you have to sift through everything. They just put all the DVDs and Blu-rays, mix them all together by genre. So you kind of have to go through everything. So I was there for a long time, did not find too much, but I did find some really cool things that, uh, some unique things that I have never seen before. This one I didn't even know about. This is the Horror Classics Volume 1 collection from Warner Brothers. This is crazy. I didn't even know they made this. Uh, if you watch the Digibook video, I did reference the special effects collection, which is the exact same style of box set. Uh, look at that. They go perfect on the shelf. Uh, I've had this one for years. I didn't even know they did a horror collection. Uh, and it's got the same art style on the inside. If you remember the uh, comic book kind of paneling art style that's on the back of that one, this has the same thing. Uh, and it looks really great. I'll open this up. There's the back. I'll go ahead and show you the films that are in the set. These are 60s and 70s Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee classic hammer horror films uh, after the big standout films in the 30s. These are when things started really getting crazy. The first one is The Mummy from 1959. And then the second one is Dracula Has Risen from the Grave from 1969. These have all got amazing titles, by the way, especially these last three. Then we've got Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed from 1970. And then we've also got Taste the Blood of Dracula, also from 1970. Amazing titles on these. Uh, I am not a huge horror fan, but I have been wanting to get more into the Hammer era of films. I've seen those really nice box sets that they've put out from Indicator. And I don't think any of these films were covered in those box sets. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments. But uh, I did a quick Google search while I was in the store and I couldn't find any other box set that included these. So I thought this was a really unique set and I wanted to go ahead and grab it. It was only $23 too. So it was not bad at all. Couldn't pass that one up. And uh, like I said, they just look great together on the shelf with the special effects collection. Uh, like I said, this is called volume one. So let me know in the comments if they ever did more volumes of this. I wasn't able to find any online, but maybe they did put those out and they're just kind of hard to find. But that's a really cool set. Uh, very happy to grab that one. Like I said, found that in McKay's. And then also for McKay's, I grabbed another super unique box set. Never seen anything like this before. This is a DVD box set of classic cartoons. It's called the Classic Cartoon Collection. 160 cartoons on six DVDs, but this opens up from the top. So you see right there, uh, you can see there's a little drawer there and the Digibook slides out from the top. And this is what you get. And this is just a super unique release. This is called the Golden Age of Cartoons. And it opens up like this. And there's just tons of information. It's basically like a book. Uh, like a crash course on this uh, era of animation, which I'm a big fan of, and I try to watch as much as I can. Out of the Inkwell is a series that I'm familiar with, with uh, the clown there. So you talk a little bit about him, and then you can just go through, it's like a little history textbook, all on the uh, history of animation, and then we get into Betty Boop, and the discs slide up from the top right there. You can see there's the Betty Boop DVD. We've got Popeye section here, and a Popeye DVD, and a little bit more about him. We've got the Superman, the Fleischer Superman cartoons, uh, a couple pages on him. Then we've got little Lulu. Uh, this is just super cool. We get it all the way into Looney Tunes later on and then Casper the Friendly Ghost. So tons and tons of cartoons on here. And uh, even more importantly, you've got all that history in there as well. Such a cool, unique set. I might actually display it just like this. Although this is a really cool set uh, that just slides in the top. So that was something I had to grab 10 bucks this is only 10 bucks uh, and, I, and I love having these cartoons available for my kids to watch from time to time. So love that. I had seen this set on eBay a couple times, uh, but I just never pulled the trigger because the price was uh, definitely wasn't 10 bucks. So I was very happy to find that for such a good price and in very good condition as well. So two box sets I found at this store. I also, real quickly, uh, one other thing I grabbed at that store uh, was uh, this very strange movie, all is Bright. This is a Christmas movie starring the two Pauls, Paul Giamatti and Paul Rudd, that I actually enjoy. This is a very dark, it's kind of, it's a very dark comedy, uh, more dark than comedy, I would say, but uh, I collect Christmas movies and uh, I don't have this one yet and it was only six bucks. So I went ahead and grabbed it, gonna throw that in the Christmas collection. I have seen it and that is one that I would like to revisit from time to time. So I had to have that in the collection. All is bright. Uh, if you haven't seen, check it out. It might be your thing. It might not. And then a couple other Warner Brothers releases that I wanted to share with you guys that I've picked up recently. Speaking of uh, animated shorts, this is a Tom and Jerry collection. This is 37 remastered theatrical shorts from Tom and Jerry. It's called the Golden Collection Volume 1. Also another set 
that uh, has a volume one that I don't think we got any more of. This, I couldn't believe, this is actually a hard set to find with the original slipcover. This one was in really, really great uh, condition and for a really, really great price. So I grabbed that mostly because, obviously I like to show my kids uh, the original Tom and Jerry shorts. This actually has the first Tom and Jerry short on it before his name was Tom and he looks very different, very different character style. But this also has the, I think it's the third short. It's the Christmas short. Really, really good Christmas short. I think it was nominated for best uh, animated short that year. Uh, love the Christmas one. And this was, uh, I think one of the only ways you can own that on Blu-ray. This might be the only way you can own that short on Blu-ray. So I wanted to get this so we could watch that every year. And there's 36 other shorts on here as well. I'm very happy to have those and, and such a nice, collection here. I still wish they would release like a complete collection of Tom and Jerry and for Looney Tunes. They keep doing these kind of little volume sets for Looney Tunes, which is kind of annoying because uh, most of those are really hard to get your hands on these days. Very expensive, but uh, this is good enough for now. 37 uh, theatrical shorts from Tom and Jerry. So been watching through those with the kids a little bit. And speaking of the kids, we showed my kids the first How to Train Your Dragon movie a couple weeks ago, and they've been on a huge dragon kick. Uh, recently. They've loved anything to do with dragons. So I got them each one dragon movie for Easter. I like to give them each one piece of physical media every holiday. So I put these movies in their Easter baskets this year. The first one that I got my son is actually a Warner Archive collection. So kind of a boutique. Uh, this is from Warner Archive. This is The Flight of Dragons, which is an animated movie that I had never heard of before. Just came across it on Amazon. Uh, it was in the recommended tab and pfft, this is really really cool this is actually a rankin and bass production this came out in 1982 and it looks just very similar to the art style on their lord of the rings movie this is a very very classic sword and sorcery quest movie tons of dragons in here uh they they liked watching this a lot we just watched it a couple days ago and they really enjoyed it highly recommend that one it's got knights it's got uh elves and dwarfs and trolls and archers and wizards and all, all the staples of uh, those classic sword and sorcery novels that I love and we don't get to see on screen very much. So Flight of the Dragons, a very fun, unexpected surprise. And then the other dragon movie that I got for my daughter was uh, Quest for Camelot. This one I am familiar with. I grew up with this movie, uh, watched it a lot as a kid and was surprised to see that it holds up pretty well. I watched this with the kids. Uh, I enjoyed it. My wife enjoyed it and uh, I think they enjoyed it as well. Uh, this is a fun one. Some pretty good music. That's from 1998, a late 90s animated film. Uh, so I recommend you check that one out. Does not have a Blu-ray yet, so we just have to rock the DVD for now. Hopefully someday we can get a Blu-ray. That is a Warner Brother release as well, so I guess potentially we could get a Warner Archive collection for that. I mean, this is the 80s. This is only uh, a decade later, so maybe someday, fingers crossed, we'll get a Warner Archive release for that movie as well, because that one uh, was a very nostalgic one for me that I grew up with. So that's pretty much everything I've been picking up the last couple months. I tried to get everything in there. Very weird, random assortment of things. We had a lot of boutique stuff and some uh, some other lesser known studio stuff. So hopefully you got something out of that. Hopefully you enjoyed me going through those. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll talk to you in the comments down below. Please, please share any thoughts you have on any of the releases we talked about today. But that's all for this video. Until next time, keep collecting, and I'll be back with another video real soon.